Hey guys, welcome to David vs. Film. I am David, yo soy David, and tonight I am watching more Graham Norton featuring Miriam Margulies. I fall on you, you fall. A big hey, hi, and hello to all of you, but to returning viewers, and especially returning subscribers, so. Well, needless to say, I fell in love with Ms. Miriam Margulies the moment I saw and heard her on Graham Norton. It was, again, just true love for me, for this woman. I think she is amazing. I think you guys' comments have been awesome. I appreciate those. Keep them coming uh, about her, you know, stories, things you've said, because uh, I absolutely, absolutely love it. YouTube recommended a video to me. If you guys haven't seen my previous reactions to her, I'll, I'll put the links here. But anyway, YouTube recommended a video. I checked it out. Uh, it was so great. So this one is some clips that I've put together uh, myself. Some of them are older, but some of them are from, I think, the newest episode uh, with Sarah Snook, which was on November 3rd. But yeah, we can just jump right in. If you'd like to see full reactions to other shows and movies I do here on the channel, you can check that out over on my Patreon. I certainly appreciate the patrons, but I appreciate you guys here on YouTube uh, for watching this as well. Again, leave me a comment. Uh, if there's something that you know about these, a like is always appreciated. And of course, a subscribe. But for now, let's jump in and watch more Miriam Margulies on Graham Norton. Particularly pleased that the first story you ever told on the show about 20 years ago is in the book. It's the one where uh, you park on a double yellow line for a few moments. Do you know the story oh, I mean? Oh, yes, yes. Well, that that had its repercussions, of course, because, well, I, I mean, I parked on a double yellow line in Shaftesbury Avenue. It was um, the day of the state opening of Parliament, and I rushed up to give a take a tape, an audio tape, because, you know, I do audio tapes, to my agent. And I came downstairs, there was a policeman pasting um, a, a parking ticket on my windscreen. And I was just furious, because I'd only been there for a, a minute. And so, you know, I tore it off the windscreen, and I said, you've got a dick that small. <laughs> because I thought, like, the best thing is to insult him as quickly as possible. <laughs> Of course. And he took umbrage, didn't, <laughs> didn't like it, and he arrested me <laughs> for a breach of the peace and uh, parking on a double yellow line. <laughs> and um, then he called for help from other policemen, and there were lots about, because it was the state opening of Parliament, and, you know, they're mingling around. And so um, I was taken in a, in a police car to Bow Street Police Station. Uh, and um, there I was arraigned, and um, they said, uh, empty your handbag. And I had a few things in my handbag, and one of them was a packet of peppermints. But they're wrapped in silver paper, you see, and that the detective in charge thought that it was drugs. Uh. And he said, um, <laughs> you know, what have we got here then? That's interesting. <laughs> and I said, it's just a packet of peppermints, officer. And he said, no, I think we better check you out, matron. And he got the, um, the matron to come and uh, put me in a, in a room privately. And I knew, I knew because I was sharp, that she was going to give me an internal examination. <laughs> I just knew that. Nothing had been said, but I knew it. So when she locked the door, she went out for a bit, I took all my clothes off immediately. <laughs> You know, you know you're going to be examined. And, and she came back in and she said, you've been here before. <laughs> I said, I have not been here before. She said, yes, you have. How did you know to take your clothes off? And I said, well, I know you're going to examine me, aren't you? They called you matron, so I knew something was afoot. <laughs> so... so um, she said, anyway, bend down or lie on the couch or something. And she uh, examined me, my front body and my back body. <laughs> and, of course, they thought I wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So first, just quickly, uh, and I, I'm trying to, again, still find my way with this, with pausing during, speaking over, things like that. My general working rule now, from what you guys have told me, 
is I'm going to talk over only if it's like a ha or oh my gosh or like something short, right? And if it's longer like this, then I'll break in. But I'm gonna try to save the break ins till the in between clips. Now, Daniel Radcliffe, presumably you are familiar with oh, yeah. uh, Miriam's podcast. Daniel Radcliffe. Because, uh, <laughs> or, or do, well, are you? Because I, you, were, you were in Harry Potter, but did you actually work together? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we absolutely. did. But I don't remember. I've been told there was a swear jar involved on set, but I, I can't remember that. I don't even remember you swearing a lot in front of me. I was I probably think... careful when it was you, okay. but when, you know, with the other kids, I didn't involve <laughs> <laughs> Just talking backstage, if that's what you call that funny little grub right, grubby area. <laughs> and apparently, it's 20 years since Harry Potter came yeah. out. So, the, yeah. Since we started filming the, the first, first one. one. And your yeah. balls have dropped since then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We get it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. But but it's interesting because for Professor Sprouse, which you know, you were in the second film and the last film. Yeah, I should have been in all of them. So I will interrupt this quickly because uh, I can tell they're at the beginning of something, so it's not the punchline. But anyway, I just wanted to say quickly again about Miriam. I first saw her in Harry Potter, so this is exactly where I came to know her was in this movie, and I had no idea that she's amazing as she is. I thought she was just some character actor. I had no idea she was the the living legend that I now know that she is. But yeah, hilarious. Yes. And that was a brave oversight, and I I'm holding them. you responsible. I told them. <laughs> but anyway, it was wonderful to be in the two that I was in, yeah. and I'm very proud of it. But you do get recognised as Professor Sprout. I do. I, I mean, I think I've changed since then, but people do recognise me. And uh, funnily enough, in Lithuania... <laughs> Lithuania? <laughs> Lithuania. Are you <laughs> Are you, have you come just to see Professor Sprout? <laughs> I don't think so. Are the films called Professor Sprout and the Deadly Reality? <laughs> no, but I was mobbed in Lithuania. Maybe because I was Jewish, I don't know. I'm the only one there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but I just think that's incredible. Like, you're being mobbed in Lithuania and you're Professor Sprout. Imagine being this bad. I know. What... What was it like? I mean, it, it, the, it's weird and funny, and I think I, the best way to see it always was like weird and funny because yeah. it will, it, you know, and it ebbs and flows, and sometimes it's in your life a lot, and sometimes it's not in terms of getting recognised. And there's been lots of very odd moments. I was chased out of a science museum in Spain. Um, and I was just like, <laughs> but it was sort of fine because everything was in Spanish there, and I couldn't understand anything inside, so it was time to leave anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, then, uh, but yeah. You got right, but someone thought you were something else in New York recently. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this didn't. This did not come up in. Alan in with the, yeah. Love him. So, uh, <laughs> I did recently. So, me and my girlfriend fostered a dog, uh, and, and it's, it, we sort of got our friends to adopt it. This is not necessary for the story. There's a dog with me. Um, <laughs> I, I, we, I was on the street with this dog, and my, my girlfriend was in the shop, and so I was. And it was very cold. And I got my hoodie and my fleece, uh, my fleece hoodie, and then a big coat over that. And the dog was really cold, so I was like, oh, I'll just kneel by you and like stroke you and like try and keep you warm, and then. And, uh, and then I saw this guy like look up at me like 10 yards away and smile and I was like yeah and just carried on <laughs> and then he walked past me and he came back uh, like he got about five steps past me and then just reappeared with a five dollar bill over my shoulder and just went get yourself a coffee mate oh. <laughs> I, I really like my girlfriend came out and I was like, I don't think I'm I'm like I'm wearing nice clothes, I thought like Oh my god. I don't know. Yeah, so I was I was very much I, was, I, I it, that was a wake up call. Apparently I have to maybe, you know, like, was, dog? was your often. dog you on a string? <laughs> no. I do maintain because the person that owns the dog has also been mistaken for a homeless person with this dog. Oh. I think the dog just looks very cold and sweet and vulnerable. <laughs> oh. No, I know. <laughs> But now, when you... Oh, my God. So, I will say, okay, so many of you... I feel like the ones I hear over and over, Greg Davies, for sure to check out more of. I hear several of you talking about Matt Damon, uh, the episode he was in. I've heard Bill Murray. I've heard uh, Stephen Fry. Anything with Stephen Fry, of course. Um, but a lot of you also mentioned the Daniel Radcliffe and and to watch it. And I know there's more I, I, out there, I think, anyway, that there is. Because I, I, there were whole episodes. So there's got to be more clips I can find. But I know I put a couple of those in with him. And I'm glad you guys recommended... Uh, that episode, because that seems to be one where Miriam was on fire that night, I will just say. Who uh, worked with great Mark Scorsese. Uh, your fashion sense didn't cheer up the crew, but you did cheer up the crew. 
Well, this is a story. It's a true story. You know Martin Scorsese, I do. of course. Yes. Well, I, I was in a film that he was directing mm -hmm. called The Age of Innocence, a very good movie, by the yes, way. It I was. hope you thought I, so. Yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm not. Ron Howard. And um, before it started, you have to go in a sort of costume parade and everybody looks at you to see if the costume fits, the character and all that. And I was the very last person to be seen that day. It was a big cast, loads of people, you know, Dan Day-Lewis and Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, really important people. And then there was, you know, that shoplifter, Winona Ryder. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't like her. I really didn't. But, and there were lots of other people, you know. Um, she didn't e like her. <laughs> Richard E. Grant, who's adorable, <laughs> and um, and you know, lots of lots of people, Sean Phillips, and and uh, uh, hundreds of people, and I was the very last person. And when I got in the room, I could see they were just exhausted. Tired, yeah. The whole crew, they they were slumped, they were tired, they were fed up, and I thought I've got to do something to cheer them up because. When you see people in that state and you know you're going to be working with them, and I thought, I know what I can do. And so I stood up there and I just lifted up my top <laughs> and <laughs> tore off my bra <laughs> and my bosoms, which are large and, and, <laughs> and, and friendly. And I, and, I, and I just gave them to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was worth doing. <laughs> now, I've seen them. I've seen them because do, you've do, seen my bosoms. Yes, do you remember when we were when we were shooting Cold Comfort Farm? Yeah. Um, the, the John Schlesinger movie. Um, you got stung on one of them by a bee. Oh. Uh, when we were doing that scene outside, do you remember that? I Pet do Petri? Yeah. That. And Not you just took them out and said, "Look." And and. Um, <laughs> And I said to John Schlesinger, because I, I said, did you see Miriam just <laughs> took her breasts out? He said, no, but I heard them hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. She seems to get naked a lot. Oh, no, here's one coming up. Yeah, this is from the... I think this is the newer episode. Uh, she always looks amazing, so I can't tell a lot of years in between when she's been on, but this does look newer. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is the one of the new ones anyway. You, let me know if I'm, if I'm right on that. I am decisive, but I can change my mind. It's I beautiful think it's things important. that go, actually, I'm wrong. George, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. It is. A lot yeah. of the time, it's shocking me. <laughs> well, you know this thing about trans? Now, always people always say, oh, you mustn't talk about trans. Well, fuck that. I'm going to talk yeah, about it. Like, here we go. <laughs> She's going to talk about it anyway. I was very keen on grammar. And so when mm. people started talking about pronouns and mm. that they wanted them and not he, she, I thought, what the... It would be talked about, but it, it's clear, it's grammar, it's the structure of language. But I met a wonderful actress in Australia, Zoe Tarakis, do you know oh, who I mean? Yeah. She's a brilliant actress. Yeah. And she's trans, mm. and I, she had a discussion with me about it. And she said, what does it matter to you if you can make somebody happy by calling them they instead of he or she? Why not do it? And I thought, that's right. It doesn't matter about grammar. <laughs> if you can make someone happy and give them a sense of themselves, then do it. Absolutely. And so I'm now somebody who uses they and all the rest of it. <laughs> well, whatever they want me to say, yes. I'll say it. I've done a lot of... I, I just want to say real quickly, I think that she's so great, and many of you pointed out that... You know, yeah, she's she's like that aunt. She's like the aunt that just says stuff at a party or at a family gathering or in the grocery store to a stranger that can make you cringe, but also that people always love, you know? And this is where I think is a good example of her showing the compassion because I think sometimes people can maybe have the impression that she's you know, rude because she's direct or that you know, maybe not so friendly. And I, I disagree totally based on the limited stuff I've seen anyway. And I feel like this story she just told is a good example of, of you see the compassionate side of Ms. Is M. The rudery, and yes. I've and I've did that in book one. But I re I remember things. It's just when you're 82, you you don't cock She's up 82. anymore. You don't wank. You know, it's you don't. <laughs> I don't. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I know you do. But... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, this is the best show <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! And I don't recognize her, by the way. I know Sarah Snook, but I to talk the other about woman sitting next to George. The more George. serious part of my life. Yes. 
uh, so that people don't just think I'm a maniac, but, mm. but a real person. Yeah. Um, and in the book, you, you, uh, you talk about politics and you tell stories and you talk about, and actually I misunderstood, you talk about your appearance on the Today program. When I didn't know that the mics were up. Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't. That's the absolute <laughs> truth. I would never swear on Radio 4, ever. Because Radio 4, to me, it's a temple. You know, it's a middle-class temple. I'm middle-class, you know. We're trapped in England in these classes, and I really want it all like that, you know? <laughs> I fucking can't. <laughs> so there it was. <laughs> I was, I was waiting to do a, a, a eulogy for Robbie, Col Robbie Coltrane, and um, <laughs> Jeffrey Hunt was the... Um, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy Hunt. I'm so worried about names. <laughs> okay. And uh, I didn't know that um, I was going to sit in the same seat as him afterwards uh, because he made his uh, comments to the radio and then he left, and I was asked to come in and sit down. And... I sat in the chair, and it was warm, from his derriere. derriere. <laughs> and uh, then when, when I uh, talked about Robbie, whom I loved, Robbie Coltrane, and I got up, and Justin, the, uh, the announcer, said something about, I bet you didn't think you'd sit in the same chair as Jeremy Hunt. And I said, no, I didn't. And he said, well, what did you say to him when you saw him outside? And I said, well, I said, um, you know, you got a difficult job. Uh, best of luck. But what I really wanted to say was, you fucking bastard. <laughs> you asshole. And he said, no, we just better get you out of the studio. <laughs> and I didn't know the mic was up. I didn't know. No, because I thought you must have. I you, you, didn't. You were genuinely upset by it. I was shocked. Yes. I was appalled at my own rudeness. Aww. and I, I was appalled. And I would like to make that clear. Yes. So, um, please forgive me, audience oh. in, of the Radio 4. There won't be any of those here. Because... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, that's why I love it, too, because you just think, oh, okay, it's going to be a no nice, normal little thing. She's going to say, nope. And then it's just like typical... Uh, Typical Miriam. But yeah, I, I definitely love to hear her tell stories like that, you know, um, where she talks about, you know, getting caught like any of us would because we all do. And you know, honestly, like it's been a little different now after doing this stuff on YouTube. Anytime I come in this room where I know we have the camera and the microphone, I just always assume that somehow someone could be seeing it. Miriam Mogley's things happen to you. Like, your, is it your house in near Dover? In Radcliffe again. Oh, yes. yes. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I do rent my house. Oh. And, um, it's like if yeah, you're yeah. interested. Two other people. I mean, she yes. doesn't see all the people. And it's the nearest house to... I know, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I know you all hate when I interrupt this, but I don't know the other woman. Tell me who she is because I, I don't recognize her. I know Alan coming. I love him. But I just want to break in real quick because I can tell us it's going to be a good story. I don't want to interrupt the rest of us. But I, I don't know who the other woman is. France, which is very important in this story, and it's four hundred and twenty-five pounds a week, and it sleeps. <laughs> it sleeps um, six people for, for seven nights. It's clean. Is there a cleaner? Cup? Yes. It, yes. Uh? Anyway, <laughs> one one day I got a call from the police, and they said, um, "Are you the owner of the gun emplacement?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> and they said, "Are you aware that it's been used as a drop for criminals?" Uh, to get rid of their drugs, <gasps> or, you know, it, it's a drug drop. I believe that's the, <laughs> yes. the phrase. <laughs> and um, I said, well, of course I didn't know. What do you mean? And they said, well, people have rented it. They were a gang, a gang <laughs> from uh, <laughs> Liverpool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, they took my house <laughs> and they dropped the drugs in the bay, or they... And there was a helicopter that came on the roof. It's a flat roof, yes. you see. And they, they had cocaine. They had 30, <laughs> something like cocaine. 13 no, no. million cocaine. pounds worth of what? cocaine. What? No, no, it wasn't like a little thing. This was a massive... What? Oh, my God. <laughs> 13 million... Jesus Christ. <laughs> ...of cocaine. Is that, is that... <laughs> I've never oh, not taken a no, party. No, that was like wholesale. Oh, wholesale. Oh, wholesale. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, it's wholesale. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I was horrified because I didn't know. I mean, I don't have anything to do with the mm. people that rent it. No. I just take the money, you know. Uh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I was, I, well, I could get more for it because it's really lovely, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the drugs. But what was 
upsetting <laughs> to me was when it was reported, of course, in the Daily Mail, um, all the people you. online said, oh, she must be in it. You know, she's part of the gang. Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious oh goodness gracious that was really really good so i will say that like probably the the part that i was looking forward to the most was the daniel ratcliffe uh scenes because you guys said so many times to be sure to check out uh the videos with with her and Daniel, and then, so I mean, those of course did not disappoint. That was the Miriam Escobar that we just left off on. And it was, uh, what else did that one have? Uh, oh, the balls dropping, of course, then top Professor Sprout and all that. But yeah, she is really, really, really awesome. Um, I, I, I like when I was going through and finding clips of, of looking for this for her, uh, like I was saying a minute ago, it's kind of tricky because I, I, I want to watch enough to see what the clip kind of is, but also not enough to spoil anything. And so far I'm getting the rhythm of the show and how they tell stories. So it's, it's been easier to, to do, but, uh, but yeah, I want to do more of the Graham Norton. I saw that the, the compilations were the try not to laugh. Uh, that little compilation looked like, looked like some really good videos in there that we could, we could take a look at, uh, as well as some others I saw with like, you know, best like female, uh, panels, these head on, I saw some Carrie Fisher in there. Um, but all the ones you guys have talked about, I want to check out and see, I really want to see, the one I think is with Matt Damon, where he was drunk, from what you guys have said. And again, we've talked about this in previous videos. I think a big component of the success of Graham Norton's show is the drinking. Uh, it loosens everybody up to have a good time. It looks like this format would have been during COVID. I see like everyone's distanced out. Paul Rudd, of course, Ron Howard, and Stephen Fry, who is just amazing. Um, yeah, but again, I just want to say thank you guys so much. Uh, keep the comments coming like you have, because that has been so educational for me as far as talk show program formats in the UK. A lot of the people that are on the show that don't recognize you have all been so wonderful about filling in those, those gaps for me. Uh, but more than anything, I just appreciate your time and how we can laugh along at this. So definitely give the video a like if you found value in it. Please subscribe if you want to see more and be sure to check the notification bell so you know when new videos come out. But for now, I hope you just have a great rest of the day slash night and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble